You're listening to Stories Behind the Songs with Chris Blair. For more information, you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at SBT Songs or check us out at ChrisBlair.com. What's up, everybody? Chris Blair here, and this is another episode of Stories Behind the Songs. Uh, I'm really excited. This week, we sat down with my friend Lauren Hungate. Um, Lauren has written songs for Carly Pierce, Bailey Zimmerman, Ann Wilson, Carter Faith, Lauren Watkins, and she's got a lot of other songs that she's currently working on that are going to be coming out soon. Uh, she she told the story about how she spent so much time building her songwriters camp and those relationships and how that ultimately led to her first publishing deal. And then we dove into some songs like songs about whiskey that she wrote for Ann Wilson, uh, Coming Home to You, and a really cool story about how that song was originally titled Bigger Houses um, and how that song ended up with Mackenzie Porter. Uh, and then her first radio single, Holy Smokes, that's out with Bailey Zimmerman. So just an awesome episode. She also shared some really great advice for songwriters that are aspiring to do this uh, and some advice that she would give herself. So it was a great episode. Let's get to it. Here is Lauren Hungate. All right, here we are. Lauren Hungate in the house. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad that you came. Oh, and uh, I'm so honored you asked me. You have written songs for so many of the people that I love oh. as just people. Yeah. Um, but also just amazing artists. And uh, you're crushing it. And I can't wait to dive into uh, some of those. So, um, but let's just go back to the beginning. You're from here. Yes. I'm from Franklin, yeah. but I like lie and I say from here. Yeah, Franklin's yeah. like 30 minutes south of Nashville. That counts. But it counts. Yes. Yeah. I always say it counts. Um, but yeah, I'm from here. Uh, my family, like my parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, everyone still lives here. Yeah. Which is so nice. So did you grow up with just music all around you or what got you, what got you no, started with it? Not at all. Okay. Like nothing. Like we never left Franklin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we never left Franklin. My parents, it's like very funny. Like everyone in my family, my parents, my brother, um, they're all very athletic. Like my dad played golf professionally. My mom like ran track and my brother, he, w he went to college on a wrestling scholarship and now he's a wrestling coach. Um, and so nobody, my mom can sing, like she's got a pretty voice, but nobody did anything to do with music. And they weren't even really like music fans at all really no not at all like my dad liked jimmy buffett and that was it that was the only th person he like listened wow. to was jimmy buffett um but i'm really i'm bad at sports and so when i was in middle school you like had to take like a music elective you had to take guitar piano <clears throat> and so i took piano as like my elective and i was like okay well like i'm not very good at this but i kind of like it and that was like kind of where like, the music part came in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went to school for music. I went to school for music. I, I didn't know when I went to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do in music, but I was just kind of like, I, I wanted to do something in music. I didn't know if that would be, I played in like bands and stuff growing up, but I, I never wanted to be like the front person. I hated, I hated that. Like even like I sang for like our church's like band and I'll never forget like rehearsing and making everyone leave the room. Like when I rehearsed, like making the band leave the room really, so that like they wouldn't look at me <laughs> or like hear me when I was rehearsing. Uh, so I never liked like the attention of being like the front man, but I would play like block chords and sing backgrounds. And I liked that kind of, but still I didn't love being on like a stage. Uh, but I knew I wanted to do something in music. I just didn't yeah. know what it was. So I went to school for music business is what I got my degree in. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then walk me through, um, you know, just after after that, you got your first pub deal in, was it? 21. 21? Yeah. 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 So, so I graduated from college in 2017 and I moved back to town um, and I got an internship. I worked for a studio in Franklin and made no money. Um, my husband and I got married while I was still interning at that studio and I was working like I, I was working at Starbucks and anthropology and interning at the studio and I was so tired and making no money and I was like what do I I don't know what I want to do 
And so I very randomly got a job um, at Red Light Management, which yep. is like a it's like a management company here in town. They have like a bunch of different locations, but the Nashville office is primarily country. And I I hadn't I loved Rascal Flats when I was yeah. a kid. Like when I was in like middle school, I love I still I like love Rascal Flats. I'm so glad they're like getting back together. But that was like really Rascal Flats and like Carrie Underwood and Martina McBride. Those were like the only country like artists I listened to growing up. But I worked for a country um manager and uh I just like fell in love with country music as like a mm. 22 year old like very late kind of bloomer I was just like I love this I love this music I love um what it says I like that it's so lyric heavy I just I like and I liked the culture of it too like I liked the country music fan and um so yeah I kind of fell in love with it I worked there for two years and then I very randomly got a job I got a job offer kind of out of nowhere for at, at Capital Christian which is like a Christian record label um that's owned by Capitol Records. And so I moved over there and uh, I worked there for about two years also. And when I worked there, I like started kind of writing songs like on the side, like as like a hobby. Yeah. And I went home and I like wrote a song and then I <laughs> came back the next day and I wrote another song. And then I kind of like sat there and I talked to my husband and I was like, Oh no. <laughs> like, oh no, I have a good job. I have a salary. I've got health benefits. But I really, there's like something, there's like something to this that I, it feels different. It feels like I would do it for free forever. Mm, wow. And um, so I just started doing it on the side yeah. and I just started busting my ass. I would go to rounds. I would come to rounds here. I'd come to rounds yeah. in the listening room and like feel so self conscious because I'd be like, I'm never going to write a song that like, I can play at the listening room and, um, but I, I would watch these rounds and I would find like the, the best person in the round. And I wasn't like, I wasn't coming to like the Saturday at 7 PM round. Cause I knew I was like, there's no way I can't write with any of these people. They will laugh at me. But like, like the 1 PM rounds or like, <laughs> <laughs> like some of those, I would like come and I'd, I'd see who I thought was like the best in the round. And I'd go up to him and I'd be like, Hey, I'm Lauren. I'm a songwriter. Like if you ever, if you want to, if you're ever open to new writers, like, will you write with me? And, um, I started doing that pretty, pretty frequently yeah. and finding people to write with. And the nature of Nashville is like, it's, it compounds. It's like you write with someone, they pull in someone else and then that gets you into a, another room and so on and so on. Um, and so I just started doing that until I started getting like some cuts and, started getting some meetings and yeah it's kind of like how it happened it like snowballed but you've got a cool story around how you got that pub deal too right yes yeah okay <laughs> this is like very i like want to preface that if there are any um like aspiring professional songwriters this is t not typically how you get it a publishing deal. <laughs> so in 2020, like I quit my job in um, August of 2019. And then in 2020, like the world shut down. And so I just started busting my ass I, again. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to write on Zoom and I'm going to write two days on Zoom and I'm going to do everything I can to keep building while the world is kind of shutting. Well, other people maybe are taking a break or whatever. I was like, I'm just going to hit it full force as hard as I can. And during this time, I was entering a lot of song contests because I was broke. And this is actually, this is a good tip for aspiring songwriters. Um, if you're even like kind of good, enter these song contests because you, if you have a song that yeah. is even like a little bit good, you'll probably win and you can win money or you'll get like second or third place and you'll win like a guitar or something. Yeah. Um, so I was entering song contests like crazy. And Topher Brown, who is a, a songwriter here in town, he had a, a contest called Make Music with Topher. And um, the idea was like, send in a summary of yourself and like two to three songs. And so I did. I was a fan of his and um, I sent him a couple songs. I ended up winning this contest. And I, 
he was like, do you have any other songs? And I was like, yeah, I have like a million. <laughs> so I sent him some more songs. And um, before he ever wrote with me, he he would met with me and he was like, hey, I'm starting this JV publishing company with Concord and um, I want to sign you. And this is, he had not written with me at all. I, he was going purely based off of his gut and off of a SoundCloud link of songs. And I had been meeting with publishers, but like there's like this stupid song and dance with publishers where until someone offers you a deal, no one wants to offer you a deal until someone else does. And then everybody. And then like, everybody yes. does. And yep. then I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Like, where were you guys? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. They they want to wait until someone else validates like, no, this this has there's something to this. Um, but he blindly he didn't know if I had offers from other people. He didn't know. I had nothing going on and he just was like, I hear something in you and, and there's something that, that I see, I see some potential. And so, um, he signed me, like we wrote, thank God it like went really well. <laughs> like I was so nervous for that session. I was like, my publishing deal depends on this, <laughs> but we wrote and it went, went really well. And, um, he, uh, he did something that like, I I think I got I was so blessed with like I'm still in my my first publishing deal but I just think like I was so I used to get so upset at God cuz I'd be like God like I'm having all these meetings and I'm having these follow-up meetings and like why is nobody signing me like am I am I a terrible songwriter like I don't understand but now looking back I'm like thank God I didn't sign like they didn't offer me something because I would have signed with them yeah. and it, and my deal now is is just proof of like, wait for the right thing. Yeah. Wait for the right thing. Um, because how it all like kind of fell into place. And my point person, Courtney Allen, um, she just like, I mean, that was a, just a big God thing too. She just, me, I'm, we're all songwriters. We're very insecure. We're very like, we're terrible. Like we have imposter syndrome like crazy. But um Courtney was just kind of like put on my calendar and it it just so happened where she was like, wow, like you, I think that you have something and I believe in you and that having a point person that believes in you, like Courtney and Topher believing in me makes me believe in myself, mm. which makes me write better songs. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just feel really blessed. Like I just, I feel like I have a really great team and um for a first publishing deal too, like most of them are like so shitty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> most of them are like, you're lucky, like you get in with like a, I don't know, but they have a, they've done just a really, really good job. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's, let's start diving into what happened after that uh -huh. and some of the songs that came out. And I, I love hearing you talk about how you would make your band leave the room yeah. uh, so you could practice because you didn't want to sing in front of anybody. And then, full circle, you're on stage with Carly Pierce at Bridgestone <laughs> yeah. singing one of the songs that you wrote for Carly. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, <laughs> yeah, just like to preface, I had to wear a, I wore like a tube top, like a strapless because I was sweating so bad. <laughs> it was yes. not like, that was like my, it, I ha like, ugh, I hope this doesn't sound, I mean, Carly knows this. I was so nervous. I mean, I was, I took a beta blocker before. <laughs> I was sweating. I like, it was hor. I mean, it was wonderful, but it was horrible. Like for me. Being on that stage is like, I I have this job so I can be side stage, not in the middle of the stage. But yeah. I was like, okay, it's Bridgestone Arena. Like, I have to do it. And my husband, because when Carly originally asked, she like sent me a voice memo and she was like, hey, like, <clears throat> I'm playing Bridgestone with Tim McGraw. And uh, I'd love if you came up and sang like a verse two of, of my place that we wrote together. And I like played it for my husband and Mickey. My husband was like, you have to. He was like, I already know what you're thinking. You're thinking like, you're going to come up with like some excuse. Like <laughs> you can't, but you have to do this. Like, and I was like, I have to. And so um, I practiced like crazy, like over and over and over again, singing that second verse and like practicing harmonies. And 
I was so nervous, but um, it was cool. Like, it was a big full circle moment. Carly, to me, I respect her so much as, I love her as a person, first yeah. off. Like, I just want everyone to know she is one of those people where you're like, okay, like, this is the type of person that should be famous. Yeah. She's kind and she's generous and she's sweet and she's encouraging and um, she's good to songwriters. Yeah. And a lot of artists aren't good to songwriters and she's really good to songwriters. And my publisher, Courtney, um, used to be Carly's publisher or she used to work at BMG where Carly is published. And Carly's camp is real tight, um, which is another thing I kind of love. Mm -hmm. I kind of love when people are like, okay, if these, if I write my best songs with these people, I'm going to keep writing with these people. Yep. And so her camp's really tight. And my publisher, Courtney, like, this is another thing about like having a, having champions who advocate for you was like, Carly, you have to write with my new writer. You have to write with my new writer. And Carly Pierce did not have to write with me. I had like nothing. And Carly was like, okay, like, I trust you. I like, if you're vouching for her, I trust you. And we ended up writing my place, which is the Bridgestone song. That was our first time writing. And, uh, now you know, I just got off a, I just finished a camp with Carly last week and we're writing, continuing it a little bit this week and we're writing for her next project. But like my Courtney's belief in her word is what got me into the room. And then, you know, we, we ended up clicking just like we, we all hoped, but yeah, so we wrote that song. We played at Bridgestone, which is cool because, like, my first concert I ever went to was at Bridgestone. So yeah. that was so cool. But, yeah, I was terrified. I was shaking. And if there's, like, a video of it and, like, my leg, I'm, like, kicking my leg the whole time. <laughs> it's, like, very obvious that I'm nervous. And my, like, eyes are closed the whole time. It, yeah, it's very obvious that I'm nervous. But it was cool. And I'm, yeah. I'm glad I did it. But I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm glad you did it, too. It was really cool. Um, I want to dive into... A little bit about uh, you know the relationship with Carly and yeah. Lauren Watkins and Carter Faith and like you've yeah. just you've you've done a really good job uh, of networking. Did that start kind of like the shows that you were coming here and just meeting people or like wh like what is that like for you to build to build those relationships and get in the rooms with them? Yeah, well, I think as songwriters, producers, even artists, like we are our best A and R's. Yeah. And um, so if we see something that we're like, oh, that gives me like, I have a special feeling about that. And sometimes we're wrong, but a lot of times we're right. And um, Carly obviously was super established by the point that I started writing with her. But for those who are listening who don't know, Lauren Watkins and Carter Faith, they're fairly new artists. Um, Lauren is signed over at Big Loud and Carter's over at Universal. But it was very like Lauren and I, I'm close friends with her sister, Caroline Watkins, who's my, is my favorite. She's like one of my favorite songwriters in town. She's so special. But she was like, hey, I have this sister who is like trying to be an artist. Would you like write with us? And Lauren at the time didn't have any deal or anything. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like I would do anything just to write with Caroline. So, um, we wrote on Caroline's porch and I was like, Caroline, your sister's really good. Yeah. Like, I think your sister could possibly be something. Like, you're, she's really good. And Lauren knows her sound. She knows what she would say, how she would say it. And that's pretty rare for an, an artist early on. And it's the same way with Carter. Carter, I was trying to get to Carter for so long. Like, I saw Carter in around here and I was like, oh my gosh. Ha like, I have to get to her. She is unreal. Her voice is unreal. Her songs were unreal. And I booked, and she, know, like, Carter's one of my closest friends now, but, like, I booked probably seven sessions with Carter, and they all got canceled. And then wow. they all got canceled. And so I saw her one time. We played around here together, and she was like, and I was like, hey. <laughs> and she was like, oh, my gosh, like, I've been so bad to you. I'm so sorry. Like, we will write one day. And I knew, I just had a feeling, I was like, okay, if I can get in the room with Carter, I feel like it will make sense. I feel like the language and how she says things is something that I connect with and something that I feel. And maybe I could help 
translate some of those those things like in a writing room with her. So we finally got in the room because of Topher, because and this is the good thing about like when you have a a partner like a songwriter who is your way you know fighting way outside of your weight class who's who's way more successful is that they're able to bring you in on things that I I wouldn't have gotten in on myself. And so yeah. finally me and Carter and Topher wrote and um we wrote a song called Greener Pasture the first time that we wrote that she ended up putting out. Yeah, such a great song. <clears throat> Thank you. Um but it was just kind of like it was one of those sessions where you're like, oh, it shouldn't be this easy and the song shouldn't we shouldn't love the song this much. Like there's something kind of special here. Like it's almost like a mm. first date when it goes really well and you're like, okay, like I'm gonna marry you probably. Yeah. And it was just kind of that feeling. And so we've continued it. And um, I mean, it's been years now we've been writing and it's still to me, me, Carter and Topher. It is, I think, the the most special combination I've personally ever been a part of mm. in a writing room where I, I know we all complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Um. So I just, I, I mean, it's just my favorite. It's like my one of my favorite creative things I've ever gotten to be a part of. And then writing with her also allowed you to debut on the Opry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was another one. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeveless dress again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. She had us sing on the Opry, which was so cool. And it felt like, what am I doing up here? Like, I feel so blessed and like a little bit of like, oh my gosh, there are other songwriters who've worked harder, who have who write better and like I I just feel so I feel so thankful and I feel so blessed that like I trusted God in my gut to do this because to me I've always asked I'm like God give me a career where nobody can say like oh well she worked hard and that's why it happened like give me a career where it's like dude it's a miracle <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle like it, it has to be God there's no way she could have done this on her own and I feel like that's kind of how it's happened. Mm. Um, but it was so special. We we sang a song um, we wrote called Already Crazy. And um, yeah, she brought me, she had me sing backgrounds and I was so nervous and my eyes were closed the whole time again. <laughs> but it was cool. My parents were there. My husband was there. Like, it was so special. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Brit Skin Beauty. Located in the beautiful Indulgence Medi Spa in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Brittany is the go-to esthetician for facials, dermaplaning, microdermabrasion, waxing, lashes, and any skincare products and consultations. So many people in the music industry use her frequently, and her work speaks for itself. To schedule your next consultation or make an appointment, visit BritSkinBeauty.com or send an email to BritSkinBeauty at gmail.com. I want to dive into uh, into some songs, but just real quick while while we're on this, what kind of advice uh, would you give new songwriters or artists yeah. that are moving to town um, around building those relationships? Could you say like it? You know, it just kind of happened. I love how humble you are. First of all, oh, well, you are incredibly talented, and you have worked hard for it. Um, I mean, it takes a lot of guts to just even walk up to a songwriter like here after a round and say, hi, I'm Lauren. Will you write with me? You know, <laughs> like, I mean, so what, what advice would you give to people? Like, did any mm -hmm. of those asks like fire back in your face and not turn out well? And like, what, what kept you driving to go, Hey, you know what? Like not everybody's going to say yes. And mm -hmm. this is how I build the camps that will get me to the songs. Yep. I, if I could do it all over again, I would tell myself, like, the worst thing that can happen is someone doesn't respond. If you ask, if you DM someone, if you whatever, you get someone's number, text them, and that's the worst thing that can happen is someone doesn't respond. And who cares? Yeah. Um. But a lot of times, maybe, you know, even if it's just 50%, they will respond. And my premise was like, if I can just get into the room, if I can get into the room, I think I can do my job. Um, 
Another thing that I I wish I would have known early on is um, diversify your funds. <laughs> 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 diversify your funds when it comes to artists. Yeah. If you're if you're purely a songwriter or a producer, I um, very early on I I found an artist that I loved, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's special. She started getting kind of like buzz with like um, she signed a, a awesome management deal and was getting like like record deal offers and and publishing offers. And I was like, okay, this is a thing. I'm only going to write with her. And so for a few months, like I only really wrote with her and, um, she got married and she had a baby and like decided that's what she wanted to do, which is totally fine. But I look back now and I'm like, okay, I wish I would have put some effort into that and some effort into someone else and some effort into someone else and some, because you never know what's going to take off. There's, yeah. there's people that I was completely wrong about that. I was like, that will never work. And it's totally working. Mm. And then, um, there's people that I was like, this is a surefire thing and it hasn't been. Mm. And so I think if you can diversify and like put a little bit into one artist, put a little bit into another artist and, you know, maybe like write with some male artists, write for pitch sometimes, write with female artists, um, still put a lot of energy into things you believe in and you can put more energy into those things, but just having options, uh, just in case, cause you just yeah. don't know. And I think too, it's very limiting if you like put all of your faith into like one thing. Um, another piece of advice someone gave me, Emily Falvey very early on. I like, I love Emily Falvey, but I always say, um, she gave me like the best advice ever. I like begged her to go out to coffee with me very early on. Cause I just, I looked up to her and, um, I was like, Emily, what, what advice would you give? And she said, always bring something to the party. She said, you never show up to the party empty handed. She said, if it's a title, if it's a chord progression, if it's a melody, if it's a lyric, always show up to the party with something Yeah, because it shows that you care it shows that you did your research on what type of artist you're working with or what type of writers you're working with. And, um, yeah, it just like, it, it looks like you care. That's it, such great advice. It's really good advice. Yeah. And I've always remembered it. And, um, I try to do it. I, yeah. I try to do it. I mean, there's times where I'm like, show up. I'm like, so I got nothing today, but, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it's, I thought it was really good advice. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You ready to dive into some songs? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to dig into uh, Ann Wilson. Yeah. Mackenzie Porter, Bailey Zimmerman. Cool. So that's what's coming. Okay. I want to ask you to play a couple songs. So think about that. Um, let's start with Ann. Um, you know, she is one of those artists that I've actually never met. Uh -huh. um, I don't think. And uh, and I, I've been a huge fan of her Christian music for a long time. I think she's just um, so incredibly talented, and I love the crossover she's doing with country. Mm -hmm. um, talk about how that relationship started and just the collaboration that you guys have had together. Yeah, Anne's amazing, um, and it, she's another one that is just like one of the just the most beautiful people. Yeah, and, and kind. And um, I've heard that it's like everything that you see online about is, is, is she exactly is her songs. who she is. She yes. is. She's exactly her songs. And she's exactly what you hoped she would be. Um, I met Anne uh, on a retreat and Nicole Gallion. That's right. Yeah. yeah Nicole Gallion, who is um, a songwriter, much more famous than me, but she's, but she's always, Nicole has uh, been very gracious with, pulling me into things. Yeah. And when she doesn't have to, because I, I, I'm have like, I can't give her anything or I can't even be like, yeah, I'll pull you into something. Cause she knows everyone like my biggest co-writers she's written huge hits with. Yeah. So, um, Nicole calls me one day and she was like, Hey, I'm writing, I'm doing a writer's retreat with Ann Wilson, Emily Wise band and myself and, and Hillary Scott from Lady A. Yeah. And she's like, I was wondering if you'd want to be a part of it. She's country and Christian. She's doing a country record, but she wants Christian themes in the in the songs. And I was like, that sounds like amazing. <laughs> that sounds like exactly what I want to write <clears throat> all the time. So, yeah, I didn't know. I'd never met Hillary. I had never met Anne. I knew Emily fairly well, and I knew Nicole. But she just pulled me in. 
And um, I was the only one, like Anne had written with all of those people before. And so I was like kind of the newbie, but we wrote uh, for a couple days and like, it just went really well. Like it just, it was easy. Um, Anne is another one where she knows exactly what she wants to say and how she wants to say it. And she's a really great songwriter too. So the song just came out really easy and like the hang was really fun. And so when we came back to Nashville, she <clears throat> started pulling me in with her producer and um, Matthew West, who like, I, he's like a Christian artist. I like loved him when I was, I was like, go to Winter Jam and like listen to Matthew West. But he was a Christian artist, but now he's like a, he's her manager. He's still kind of doing the artist thing, but uh, he's also, he is an incredible songwriter. He's such a great songwriter. So she pulled me into like, those people she's had her biggest songs with and she like pulled me into that world mm. and um yeah we just started writing and so um i ended up getting four songs on her record um but it was just very easy it was just like it was it was like okay now i can like get all, all my religious innuendo titles <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like it's not obnoxious like it it makes sense so I love songs about whiskey. Thank you. Thank Such you. Such a great song. Thank you. Yeah. So that is, um, that's Anne's current, it's her radio single right yeah. now, which is so cool because it's like, I don't know. It's a song. If you listen to it, it's not something where I don't think you'd typically be like, this is a country radio song. But I think if anyone was, is to pull it off, I think it'll be Anne. So. Yeah. Um, let's dive into Mackenzie. Mackenzie is the best. <laughs> She's awesome. So funny enough, I have written so many songs with Mackenzie Porter. And on her record, I got three cuts and two of them I didn't write with Mackenzie. I've written so many songs with her that I love. Um, but it's just so funny. And this is like, this is the other thing. I love when artists take outside songs. Absolutely. I, I'm yeah. so pro take outside songs. Let yep. the best song win and let whatever the record needs, let that song win. And I would advise, even if you're in a, Mackenzie's an incredible songwriter, yeah. but she still takes outside songs. And we wrote great songs together, but I love that she was like, okay, yeah, I like these songs that we've written together, but I like these ones that you've written without me more. And so I'm not going to compromise the integrity of a song um, just so I can have a piece of the publishing. Yeah, it's so big. It's so big. And I feel like it's a trend that's kind of happening more, which mm -hmm. makes me excited as like a songwriter. Um, but yeah, we, uh, I'd, I'd written a bunch with McKinsey. We wrote um, her new single. Um, it's called Coming Home to You, in parentheses, Bigger Houses. And I've taught, so... <laughs> Dan and Shay has a song called Bigger Houses. And I've talked to the songwriters from Dan, and, like of the Dan and Shay song. Yeah. And so they know. I've like told them, I'm like, I tell this story at rounds all the time. But like, <clears throat> we wrote McKinsey's Bigger Houses. And then we saw like two weeks before Bigger Houses was supposed to release, Dan and Shay put out a song called Bigger Houses. And it's the radio single. And we were like, oh, no. And McKinsey was going on tour with Dan and Shay. And so we were like, oh, no. What do we do? So we we rewrote the song. Me, I wrote the song with Emily Wiseman Topher and Caroline Watkins. And we were like, what do we do? So we tried rewriting the song. I can't even remember what the, the title was like. I don't know. Something not as, something stupid. And, <laughs> and Emily like went back in, recut the vocal for the demo to show her. And it just didn't feel as good as the original. And so... We went back and Mackenzie was like, we'll just change the title. So we changed the title to Coming Home to You in parentheses, Bigger Houses, so that it wasn't the same as the Dan and Shay one. But um, yeah, I love making the joke on stage where I'm like, do we have any Dan and Shay fans in the house? And everyone's like, woohoo. I'm like, I don't know Dan and Shay. I've never met them. <laughs> and this is not the Bigger Houses that you think it is. <laughs> um, because that song's amazing too. But yeah, she ended up, uh, she cut it. And then she cut a duet version and. Yeah, the duet version just came out just October came out, 18th. Yeah, it came out Friday. Yeah. Or like, yeah, I don't know when this will come out, but yeah. it came out October 18th. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so she put out a duet version, and that's the one that they're, like, sending as the single, which is really exciting. So cool. Yeah, yeah, and she's awesome, and I'm I'm proud of that song. And you got to write that on uh, your birthday? Yes, I wrote it on my birthday. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> it was, like, um, Courtney and Topher were, like, do you want, like, the day off for your birthday, or do you, like, want to write? Because it was, like, during the week. It was, like, a weekday, and, like, my husband works a nine to five. So I'm like, okay, I could either like sit around or I could have like the most fun session of all time. So and you so spend your birthday and you go, right? I spend my birthday. Yes. And now look at and what happened. And now it's a yes. single. I know. Yes. That is so, I, yeah, I pulled and I was like, okay, who are my, who are like the most fun slash my like heart writers? And it, it's Emily Topher and Caroline. And I was thinking like, Maybe we won't even write a song. Like maybe we'll just have lunch and have a fun day. But we ended up writing that song, and yeah, now I'm like, thank God I worked on my birthday, I guess. So uh, take take me into the room a little bit. I want you to play a little bit of this song. But yeah. um, take me into the room a little bit. Like whose idea was it, and mm -hmm. like how how fast did this song come out? So fast, um, like probably scarily fast to where we probably should have been like, okay, we need to like look this over and make sure that this song makes sense. We just wrote that so fast. Yeah. Uh, Caroline came in with the title, Bigger Houses. She didn't have a hook or anything to it, but she was like, I, she told this story. Um, her husband and her, they live in, in a very sweet house in a very bad part of town. And she was like, you know, they're trying to move. Um, their house is little, but she was out there with her husband and their dogs. And she was like, this is the best. Like, this is what it's about. Like, um, and I don't know. And I feel like we all kind of resonated with it a little bit of like, man, you know, it's not, we are, even if we have no money, we're all very rich in the sense of like, we have wonderful families yeah. and, um, we are we have our dream job. Like we get paid to write songs. It's so stupid. Like it's crazy. And so, yeah, to me, my mom used to tell me just real quick. Yeah. Uh, she used to tell my brother and I growing up that we're rich in everything that matters. You're yeah, exactly. And it just, it still sticks with me. It, me too. Yeah. And like M Mickey, my husband and I, and we have a son and like, we live in the teeniest house and it's two bedrooms. But every morning I'm like, I, have it I have everything yeah and um and Caroline had that sentiment and it's like one of the things that makes her such a, a brilliant songwriter but also just an amazing human and so I always say this like to me yes there are bits and pieces of all of us in this song but it it to me it's like it's Caroline's song um and I I don't know I just love it I love that it's one of the it's like one of the ones that you like hope you hope it gets cut and you yeah it's one of the ones that you're like, oh, I'd be so proud if that one did something. Um, so, yeah, I just, I love it. <laughs> you want to play a little verse chorus? Yes, I will. Let's hear it. Ugh. Okay. It's only two bedrooms, the back door six. Keep saying that we're gonna get that faucet fixed Scratches on the hardwood for moving that couch There's weeds in the garden we still ain't torn out I know we look at our friends sometimes Think they're living our dream why would I wish for a different life? We don't got it all, but we got all we need There's always gonna be bigger houses Longer driveways and nicer cars There's always gonna be wider fences Redder roses in a greener yard Most people would kill for a higher uphill Looking down on a better view I don't want no bigger house if I ain't coming 
at home to you. Mm. I freaking <laughs> love that song. You're so sweet. <laughs> Everybody out there needs to go uh, listen to that song. Yeah, um, please stream it so both, we can make some money. <laughs> both the single and the new duet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let's uh, let's move into your first radio single with Bailey mm-hmm. Zimmerman. Yes. Another great song. Thank you. Yeah, religious innuendo song. <laughs> yeah. Holy smokes! Let's Holy dive into smokes. this. Yeah. Um, yes, it's so funny. I wrote that song with. Ben Stennis and Michael Tyler, who are so good. Ben has written, I mean, he wrote Till You Can't, so (laughs) two-way. But he, I mean, he has so many songs that I'm so jealous of. But he is the perfect, him and Michael. Michael is such an incredible songwriter, too, and has humongous, huge hits. Like, you should just look up both of them, honestly. But they are both, to me, the perfect line of, um hit and heart and is pretty it's pretty rare to have both and there's a lot of people who can like write hits but you're like you listen to them and you're like that's a hit song but I feel nothing and then there's a lot of people that write purely heart songs and you're like oh man that makes me feel something but it's seven minutes long and like makes me sleepy (laughs) and uh they're the perfect kind of combination of both and We wrote, this is the first time the three of us had written together. It was my very first time writing with Michael. I'd written with Ben once before. The first time writing the three of us. And I was very pregnant and very sick. And I remember in the middle of us writing the song, I like went into the bathroom and threw up. And I was like, what am I doing? I need to go home. But I was like, I'm going to muscle through it. I'm going to muscle through it. I'm like, thank God I did. Because now it's like paying for diapers and formula. Yeah. (laughs) But, um. We wrote it and it was Ben's title and he had actually thrown it out in a room to Michael before and Michael was like, I don't know, but he said it and like, like I said, I love religious innuendo and so he was like, I have this title, holy smokes. And Michael was like, yeah, I remember you saying that. I do think that there's something to it and I was like, I I love that. (laughs) And um, so we were like, how do we make this a song? Like, what is it a song about? And uh. It was like, okay, well, it's a song about cigarettes and churches. Like, let's not reinvent the wheel. Like, holy smokes, holy church, smokes, cigarettes. And then we kind of were like, how can we make this? Like, how can we have a story to this? And so we just all started talking. And I started like, I talk a lot in sessions. (laughs) And I started talking about my husband and I, we used to park at this church when we were in college to like hang out and like talk. (laughs) um and like one night we got there's like a parsonage which is like basically like when the pastor lives on a house on the property of the church and so we got the police called on us and they were like you can't park here and hang out and so we were just talking about that and we're like okay well what if we did like that like how do we like what if we wrote that as a story and incorporated the cigarettes and all of the other stuff and um so yeah, we wrote we wrote it and uh their publisher Laura Alexander who's amazing, she's an amazing publisher. She sent it to Bailey. Like we wrote this on like we got the demo on like a Friday night and like by Saturday morning Laura had texted it. Like my publishers were like mad. They were like we didn't even have a chance to pitch it. Um but Laura pitched it and she pitched it to Bailey and then she pitched it to Corey Kent's team as well. And yeah, Bailey, wasn't there some kind of fight between them, like a friendly fight? But like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like, like a, I'm gonna do it. No, I'm gonna do there it. There was like, like a we both want this song. Yeah, which was awesome because like I never, I like felt like the pretty girl that's of prom. Gonna, yeah, I was that's like, gonna make you feel so good. Oh my gosh, I was like, two artists want my song, and like they're not even, they're like good artists. And uh, the thing was, we had pitched it to Laura, had pitched it to Bailey first, and Bailey was like, they were planning on doing a deluxe edition of Religiously that album. And they were like, this will be perfect for the deluxe edition of Religiously, which all of my like songwriters, like all the signed songwriters, when you hear like, yeah, this will be awesome on the deluxe version. You're like, like a little bit. Um, And Corey's team was like, this will be a single for Corey if you give it to us. And we, all of us, like we talked and we were like, we just got a feeling like it was pitched to Bailey's first. That's an important relationship. 
let's let's keep it with Bailey. And like, I think that it we should give it to him. And so we were planning on just a deluxe song on a deluxe version of an album. Yeah. And uh, it came out like pretty suddenly. Like we got like a text like two weeks before that was like, hey, this song's coming out. And we were like, when? And nobody told us. And then we like saw on like Instagram. It was like, this song's coming out this at the end of February. And we were like, oh, okay, well, I guess it's coming out. Not on a deluxe version. It's coming out by itself. And so we were like, great. Um, it came out and we were like, cool. We have a like a focus track from Bailey Zimmerman and he streams like crazy. Like, that's awesome. And um, yeah, it like the same thing. We we're like, is it a single? Is it a single? Nobody would tell us anything. And then like a couple like weeks before it was like there was rumors of like this is gonna be a single, this is gonna be a single. And yeah. finally they told us like, yes, it's gonna be a single. And uh yeah, it just went platinum, which is yeah. crazy. That is crazy. And it's in the top 40 right now, which yep. is so exciting. I like never thought ever. Um, I try not to like look at the charts because it like stresses me out and I can't do anything about it. So my publisher will email me every Tuesday. She'll email me like the update, but then I don't look at it because I just. Oh, that's got to be so hard. See, I think I would be like. I know I'll be, that's the reason though. I know I'll become obsessed with it yeah. if I understand it. And like, I can look at the radio charts and I don't know what any of the numbers mean, except for like the numbers where it's like this week, it's this number on the charts, but all the other ones, I don't know what they mean. And I don't want to learn because I know I will become obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah. And it's so out of my control. I can't yeah. do anything. Um, but yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm like very thankful for that song. I, who, you know, it's a piano ballad, so. Yeah. Who knew a piano ballad could be a single? I love it. <laughs> I do too. You want to play a little bit of that one? Yeah. I will totally play a little bit of that one. <clears throat> I was only scared of the devil and her dad So we parked somewhere we knew they'd never look No, I'd never seen nothing like her Playing with the flame on her mama's lighter No one too long for I was hooked Heaven was a preacher's spot in that first church parking lot Her hanging on to me Like the cross on a rear view desk Her eyes are blue The words are red On that half pack of cigarettes At 17 That's what hallelujah was Life on heavy In the back of that Chevy Me, her, and the Holy Ghost Something about us Hell of a rush Falling in love, lighting up them holy smokes Oaks. So good <laughs> Thank you I'm going to just put it out there, Bailey I think you do need to put a version of this out there with Lauren singing with you Heck no, no yes. way Heck no. yes, heck yes, yes <laughs> I'm like, okay, if I can get a piece of the master, sure. And if I don't have to tour or do perform it ever. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, um, thank you for sharing your story. I know you have oh, a right to get to. You're and, so sweet. Uh, thank you for having me. Seriously, yeah. I this is my this. I mean, the listening room and the Bluebird, I think, are the my they're my favorite venues. Oh, thank you in the world. So thanks. That means so much, especially it, coming from you. Thank you're you. So sweet. <laughs> um. Just real quick before we uh, wrap up, uh, you've got a lot of other cool stuff going on with Carly and Ingrid and mm -hmm. um, Jordan. Who, like, there's a lot of projects that you're working on right now. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there's so many, and I know I'll, like, forget. Raylan. Yeah, um, Raylan. Um, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully songs on all of those projects would be great it's always like so funny because you never want to like count your chickens before they hatch yeah but even if i'm not on there i know these projects will be special so i'd love to 
plug them in general. Um, Carter's recording her new album like today as we speak. Um, so it is so special. There, I have some a couple songs on it, but there are so many songs I didn't write that I, I listened to and I'm like, I wish I would have written. Mm. So keep your eye out for Carter Faith's new record. Um, Lauren Watkins, so special too. She'll be putting out new music. At some point, she's like very secretive, so I never know when. Uh, yeah, Ray Lynn is currently working on new music, some of which I'm very excited about. Ingrid Andrus is working on a record. She's wrapping it up right now. And um, the songs are really special. I do have one coming out with Jordan Davis. Um, but nobody, again, nobody will tell me anything. So yeah. I don't know when. I don't know when it's coming out. But it's one I'm really proud of. So, uh, yeah, be looking out for that one, too. And Carly's new record. I This is like, I feel like this is my thing where I'm like, this is like what gets me so amped up right now is Carly's new record. Um, I The songs are just cool and um, special and sad and happy. And like, it just feeds everything that I love about country music and about songwriting. And um, I'm really proud of the songs that we've, we've written for it. And yeah. I think it's going to be a really special project. And when it's good people Ugh, like that. It's, and it's it like your friends. so special. When it's your friends and yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, these are exactly who I want to win with. Like, you know, knock on wood that it, it people people like it. But like, man, I'm just having like fun. I'm having fun yeah. with my friends. You know, uh, the I, I started this podcast before it was really like really before podcasts were a thing mm -hmm. years ago. And I only did, I don't know, maybe seven or eight episodes and then kind of shelved it. And then we came back to it like a year and a half ago. But Carly was my very first guest. Aww. And it was, uh, we put we put that episode or we recorded that episode literally a week after she put every little thing out. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's just been, it's been so special to watch her career. And, and you kind of talked about, alluded to this earlier, but like, Knowing so many friends like her that I've watched come up and now they're hosting shows and winning awards and all mm -hmm. of this, but they're the same people yeah. at the end of the day. And they're just down to earth, great people that haven't changed. When you and I have both seen that happen yeah. with other people well, where they, they do have, change. They have but every reason to change if they wanted to. It, yeah, like, exactly. But w when they're still kind and their character hasn't changed yeah. even though um their status has i think that's like i mean it's the best yeah i, I, I want to be associated with it so. absolutely yeah yeah well i'm so happy for you it's just so many great <laughs> oh. projects that you're you're involved in and um you're you say that, that you didn't work hard for it but you did <laughs> well i had a lot of help i had a lot of help i've got really good people around me yeah. so yeah. yeah uh last question yeah if you can go back to Franklin, Tennessee mm -hmm. and go talk to eight-year-old you, yeah, what advice would you give yourself? Oh, that's really, that's a good question. I think I would say everything is going to work out just fine and to be gentle and give yourself grace. Mm. Um, because I'm pretty hard on myself and I have, I have been forever, but I feel like I'm finally in this like season of where I'm like, I'm doing the best I can and that's all I can do. And so I think I would tell myself, be kind to yourself, give yourself grace and everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be fine. You're going to turn out fine. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep doing what you're doing and keep writing <laughs> great songs because we love them. Oh, I will. Even if no one listens, I will. Oh, well, everybody's I listening. Help it. <laughs> uh, and speaking of listening, thank you guys out there for listening. This has been another episode of Stories Behind the Songs. You've been listening to Lauren Hungate. I am Chris Blair, and we will see you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of Stories Behind the Songs with Chris Blair. Make sure to give us a follow on Spotify if you enjoyed this episode and make sure you click that notification button so you can keep notified when new episodes come out. We release brand new episodes every Tuesday and you can find us on YouTube at Stories Behind the Songs with Chris Blair or anywhere you listen to podcasts. 
Don't forget to send us a comment letting us know what you thought of the episodes. We love getting your feedback and share this with your friends. The more we grow, the more that we can keep doing this. It's our mission to bring you all of these great stories behind the songs from some of Nashville's most iconic artists and songwriters, publishers, producers, everyone in between, and a lot of my great friends. We love what we do and we love sharing their stories with you. We appreciate all of the continued support. Thanks also to all of our sponsors and we will see you all next week.